one more thing I wanted to note before we start putting it all together, and that is the bump maps. And what we had to do in order to get a nice effect is for the bump maps, the texture, texture amplitude is quite high. See here we have a 5. And the default setting of 1 is a bit too... It's a too little of amount to create a good effect. And we're going to go on a little here. And especially from far away. Now if we were really close up, uh, 1 might do the trick, but we've upped it to 5 so that we can really see the detail from far away. And you can see the bumps in here and whatnot. You can see the bump map along the bottom here. We don't have anti-aliasing on, but you can kind of get the idea. Alright, now we're going to start putting it together. And we're going to switch to the top view, because it's going to be a lot easier to work with when building our castle. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is just kind of move this stuff out of the way. Because we're going to start with the gatehouse, which we have, these are separate objects, but if you click on the tower to the gatehouse and you push M for motion options, we've parented it to gate layer 1, which is the main gate. So we can move this around and this will go with it. Now what we have to do is we have to clone this tower and we're going to bring it over. And we want to make sure it's about equal. And there, that looks pretty good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a piece of the uh, large wall segment. And what I did for that was uh, the small section, which is like the one we modeled before, is, pretty, is the exact same thing as this large section. But what I've done is I have and did this in Modeler to make it a lot easier to put it together, is I've taken and copy and pasted it um, several times so that there's three sections. And we can move around big sections at once. And we also have... Uh, this small section, just in case we need only a little bit of the wall, two sections or one section. Now I'm going to use the drum tower right now to put it right next to the, the gatehouse. And we want to make sure that when we put this in, that we don't have the merlins. right up against it. And we want to use the open section, the uh, little notch in between to go up against things. And now we want to make it centered with the corbels. Okay, one thing I'm going to do really quick is go into lighting properties and go to uh, Global Illumination, and I'm going to change the ambient intensity, which is the shadow intensity, the part that doesn't receive light, and raise it up to about 50%. And that's so we can kind of see what's going on right now. We'll, of course, change that back to 5 or down to 0 before we actually start rendering it. But just right now, to put the model together, now we can see the shadowed areas a lot better, and you could also crank it up to 100%, but right now I'm going to keep lighting in mind just a bit, so I am going to leave it at 50. Now you can take in, I'm using Control c for clone, and just clone that object, the uh, drum tower and wall. And as you can see, we have the Merlins right on the end this time. So what we're going to do is just move it in 
so that the Merlin is inside. And we're getting that gap there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of accent the, uh, the gatehouse, and with that I'm going to use some of the lookout towers, which are the taller towers. Actually, I think I'm going to use the next one down, just so it's not too high up. might be a little overpowering. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and change this display properties so that we have a double viewport. So that we can have perspective in one view and top in the other. And you can change this just by right here. We could also operate the camera in this view. And I'm going to put them about right here and clone it. Undo. Use the arrow to constrain it to the axis. And that's looking pretty good so far. Okay, the next thing I want to do is use these round towers up in front. And we're going to keep pretty much the whole castle symmetrical. We're going to do some slight changes here and there, just so it's a little more realistic. But mainly overall, it is going to be symmetrical. We're making it just so that we're inside and not butting up against the Merlins. And then I'm going to go ahead and clone this large tower and bring it over to the other side. And it's a lot easier when working with two viewports so you don't have to keep switching back and forth. And all you have to do is go to the display properties which you can just hit D on the keyboard to get to that screen I was at before. We'll just pull it in. Now there is one thing. The uh, doors to the towers are in the inside right now. So what we're going to do is if you have a scroll on your mouse, you can scroll through the options, uh, rotate, position, scale, and if not, you can go to modify and select rotate, which is also Y on the keyboard. And we're going to change the heading 180 degrees, and that's just so we put those doors in the inside. And we don't worry about intruders trying to get in. And it's all pretty simple once you get everything modeled, because it's kind of like having a Lego set. And all you gotta do is just put the pieces together, and you can do so much with it when you have sections, and you're kind of limited when you do everything in modeler all at once, because a small change can become a, you know, a rather large change. But in, in a layout, it's a lot easier. Okay, we're gonna grab a regular tower now. Actually, we're going to take this drum tower, and we're going to rotate the heading on that 180. Just so we get these a little closer to each other. Okay, now they're about equal. And now we're going to grab a piece of the regular tower, or the regular wall. Because right now we're working on the concentric wall, which is our perimeter defense. And our curtain wall is the one with the sort of awning on it and the roof. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to leave this alone and clone it. 
because we're going to be rotating it. And we're going to rotate it about 60 degrees. And we can just type it in down here. Hit T to move. Move the keep out of the way a little. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to clone it and do it on the other side. And change its rotation to negative 60. And I'm still scrolling between move and rotate with the uh, mouse and the scroll button. Now one nice thing if you're going to have perspective open is to, if you use this button right here, it centers it to the pivot point of the object, and by doing that, the perspective view will move with the object, and it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on in multiple viewports. I'll just turn that off right now. Now we're going to have the concentric wall be sort of large so that we have room for the curtain wall on the inside. And what we're going to do is now we're going to take another one of the... Uh, is it the tall... the medium tower? And we're going to use these as our kind of our joint pieces. So just clone it and we can move it over. And now with the angled walls, the Merlins aren't going to always match up and some of them might be butting up against, but we'll just do it as close as we can. Like I said, it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. And that's mainly because the the way the Merlins are. And we could go in and edit the wall and make another one with two Merlins or two open ends on the sides. But right now we're just going to work with what we have. As you can see, we already kind of have a castle coming together here. And we're going to grab another, actually, we're going to grab another drum tower and clone it. And change the rotation to 90 degrees. And clone that again. way we've made this wall, we've made it just a little bit smaller than the tower, so they'll butt up. And that's probably the best thing you want to keep in mind when you're modeling your towers. Of course, you can always switch back between modeler and layout to edit things if needed. And that's one of the nice things about the hub, is it'll automatically update. And that's what I did before preparing the scene, as I was jumping back and forth and editing things and 
taking care of little proportion issues, like making sure the gate wasn't taller than the, the keep. Just move this stuff inside right now. Okay, now we're going to use the tall tower and clone it. And clone it again. And then we're going to use the regular concentric wall. Clone that. And we're going to give this more of a tilt, more of a heading rotation than the other one. And then we'll clone it, and for rotation we'll give it a positive 45. And I don't know if you can tell, but my computer is already starting to lag a little bit with all this geometry, which is another good reason why we do it in separate pieces as if this was one just one model it would probably be lagging more than it is right now okay now we're going to add two more large towers and we're just going to keep this kind of a small castle and not put too much into it for the sake of the tutorial and its length And we'll clone that. And I think we have the doors on the outside again. So we're going to go to rotation and put it down to zero. Grab this one and put it down to zero. And grab a piece of the concentric wall. see how high that small tower is. Just use another one of the medium ones. And then we have sort of our outer wall. And we didn't give ourselves a lot of room to use the curtain wall, but we're going to fit it in as best we can. And if you look at it proportionate wise, there's actually a lot of room between these two, even where they're at right now. We're going to move our keep into position. Just put it right about there. And move these towers out of the way for the time being. Actually, we're going to go ahead and use these small towers and put it right next to the keep just to add a little more to it.
And now we're going to check our curtain wall. And as you can see, we have just enough room here to fit the curtain wall into the tower. And with the angle, it's a lot easier. As you can see. And we actually have these positioned the wrong way right now, so for the heading on this, we're going to change it to 180 degrees. And for the heading on this, we should be able to do a negative 45. Nope, that's not going to do it. I will just manually put that in. That's about good. There's one last thing we have to texture, these windows right here. I'll look at those in a little bit. I'm going to clone that. And then match it up. So it's right up against that edge. And we'll take this tower again. and clone it. And just for the sake of time, we're going to do this not so complex. No, we haven't done it, but if you want to get a more effective result with the pivot center for the uh, viewport, you can change your pivot points. Okay, we're going to clone that and bring that down. And now one thing we don't have here is a small enough gate for the curtain wall. So in this case, we're just going to block it in. And just leave it up to the imagination. Clone that one more time. Do that.
clone that again. Set that back to zero. And we're not going to worry about matching these up too much right now. Just want to kind of get through this. We'll clone it again. And as far as heading goes. Negative 90. Make sure those match up. Okay, we'll add this part right here. And one last tower. We haven't used that wall yet. Actually, I think what we're going to do with it is make a separator. Hmm, that doesn't look like it will work out very well. So one thing we didn't design is two cross-section walls, and it's basically the same principle as when we did the drum tower, like right here, where it's all matching up, except we have two walls intersecting instead of a tower intersecting. So we're going to go ahead and just... Actually, we're going to keep it in the scene. If we open up the object properties, under render, we're going to change its dissolve to 100% so it's not seen. And we can also take these towers, and I'm just going to place some random ones. make the scene just a little bit more lively. I'm going to check this out in the camera view. And we're going to have to change the texture on these windows right here, so we're going to pull up Surface Editor. And we're going to use the door ring texture from the tower and open up the curtain piece. And that's going to work out fine. Now there's one other thing you could do and that is for cases like the curtain wall, it's not so much needed. And that is for the concentric wall, where the pieces seem to, let's see, right here, it's a good example. Where the pieces join up, you could add like a door right here, just so it all kind of blends together and kind of flows together. And you can even just copy this door, size it down just a little and put it in there, just so everything kind of meets up and matches up. And like I said, you could add other things like uh, torches, and of course archers, animated people.
And I definitely would not recommend a high resolution model like this for game design. Definitely scale it down if you're going to be doing this for games, especially with the bevels that we have along here and the inward shifts here. One bevel would do it for that. And as far as the arrow loops go, if you are going to be creating a castle for games, I would recommend doing that as far as uh, built into the texture, which you might have to do UV mapping for, and it might be a little more complex of a texture and a lot take a little more time, but it's definitely well worth it in the end if you can have a smooth flowing game. And we're just going to do a quick render of this and see how this looks without using radiosity or anything as of yet. Just to see if there's anything we forgot. Looks pretty good. And once we have anti -alias on, aliasing on, we'll be able to pick up this texture a lot better if we render it from up here. Plus, we also have the uh, global illumination on very high. And that looks pretty good. Our castle is completed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and render something with radiosity from different viewpoints and kind of show you what it looks like. And then we'll be finished. <laughs>